I hope it has blessed you. I hope you were able to track it, to see it, to, to follow it along. It is so absolutely, utterly exciting to be able to see it unfold, to be able to tie it to the discourses, to the gospels, to the book of Revelation, to the feasts of the Lord, to the beginning of creation, to the end of it. It is absolutely mind-blowing, and I hope and pray it blesses you as it does me every single time. I could share this every day, till the day it starts, and I will never tire of it. So thank you for inviting me, and uh, I will be more than happy to come uh, whenever you guys would like. And you could also come join us at uh, Ministry Revealed as well, and come and join us in the forum as well. doesn't mean you have to stop being here, but you can also come and join us there if you'd like as well. With that, where are you, Michael? Hi, brother. I don't know. Oh, wow. Uh, you left us with no question. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, uh, thinking uh, well, like a two-hour presentation would be enough. But that you went that you went even further, explaining, you know, why it's you know the twenty twenty four is the year is because of you connected that the nineteen sixty seven, right? Uh, and then the seventy years. By the way, I have a question, brother Alan about the uh, house of uh, Israel uh, that you talk about and then the house of Judah are we yes. uh, just for the um, uh, benefit of the other you know brothers and sisters who are not familiar of that um, is there a 270s that you know we're looking uh, for the house of Israel and then there and then the house of Judah yes so uh, you had to go there right that's that's a good one and that's a uh... Uh, a deeper one to understand because, you see, within the ministry revealed, all the way back to 2000 and uh, yeah. all the way back to 2018, I was I was expecting that we were in the year as well. And you have to remember, many, many, many people, you know, from all of the pastors that speak on prophecy, even though there's not that many, from everybody that was looking at that time— <clears throat> They were, everybody was frantically looking because they knew that the 70 years of Israel when they came into the land was now up. And so what had happened is everybody was talking about Revelation 12 sign and, and 70 years for Israel. And then when the Revelation 12 sign didn't happen and when 70 years came and went, nobody spoke about it anymore. We were the only ministry that I know of and people that came from this ministry that were speaking still about the 70 years. And here's why it was important. There, there's a dual count for 70 years. And here's why it's important to understand. In Psalms 90 and 10, we have a fantastic piece of confirming revelation. In Psalms 90 and 10, most people out there in prophecy, they just have not understood it because it's impossible to understand without the 14 years. So we see, it says, the days of our years are 70. And if by reason of strength, they're 80. Well, that's 10 years. Yet is their strength, which means if you can go from 70 to 80, your strength is labor and sorrow. And labor means tribulation, sorrow, pain, travail. What does sorrow mean? Affliction, tribulation, wickedness, which means if you can go from 70 to 80, that's 10 years of tribulation. And then it says, for it is soon cut off. So just like uh, Daniel chapter 9, you have seven weeks as years where they're removed from the land. And a lot of people, I'll, I'll go to this first. A lot of people wonder, well, what are you talking about? Why does Jerusalem have to be destroyed so that the land can rest? Why do they have to be removed so that the land can rest for seven years? Well, Scripture tells us. Because of their disobedience, because of their disobedience, he's going to appoint terror upon them. And it's going to last, this punishment, for their sins seven times. Seven times. Seven years it's going to last. Because they never allowed the land to rest. He's going to bring the sword, pestilence, the hand of the enemy. Why? Why? Because he never allowed the land to rest. 
He says it in verse Leviticus 26, 34. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate and you be in your enemy's land. And then even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbaths. You see, they will never be able to truly rebuild the temple until the land rests for seven years. You see, the Lord tells them, hey, this land isn't yours. This land is my land. And you are just sojourners on it. I have allowed you, Leviticus 25, 23, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. So the land must rest for seven years before it can be rebuilt on. So that's why <clears throat> when you go to Daniel, people will tell you, oh, no, that's the seven weeks as years connected to the next seven that are being described. Nope, it's not. That's why in, in Daniel 9, it had a comma and that separated it. When you realize the 14 years, it becomes crystal clear. And in Psalms 90 and 10, you see this, 10 years and then soon cut off. Well, in Daniel 9, you saw the seven years, comma, and then three score and 10, which is about three and a half years. So if you take three score in physical 60 weeks, that's one year and about two months. And then you have two weeks, which is weeks as years. So you've got about three years and two months. So we always say about Ten and a half years or three and a half years approximately into trumpets. And what do you get here? Ten years and soon. So you've got your same count of about ten and a half years. And we fly away. Well, who's flying away? You'll have you'll have uh, prophecy teachers try to tell you that this is pre-trip. Well, it's absolutely not pre-trip because the fly away has nothing to do with pre-trip. The fly away is Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. Way after the pre, way after the mid, it's at the first woe. When the fifth trumpet is sounded, Satan has lost his battle in heaven. We're about 10 and a half years into tribulation, and he goes after them. And what happens? They fly away on the wings of an eagle into the wilderness where she's nourished for what? A time plus times plus a half. That's one plus two plus three. Uh, sorry, one plus two, which is three, plus a half. Three and a half years. So at about ten and a half years, how many years are left in the tribulation? Three and a half. So what you end up seeing is seven years. Then you've got your three and a half, which takes you to the midst of the eleventh year. Satan has two and a half of the final three and a half. But that group is gone until the end of the second three and a half, and they're not brought back until their restoration. So Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, is this final three and a half years, which begins, just like it said, from 70 to 10 years and soon. So you get a picture of 10 and a half years and then flying away being three and a half years for a total of 14 years. So I'll get into what the purpose of 70 then is. We just saw the 70 being the end of Jerusalem and then having that final year. <clears throat> but let me show you something else along the way to prove to you that the temple time frame of when it's built. Check it out. This is another beautiful piece of scripture. In 1 Kings 6, 37 and 38, in the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid. So what does that mean? In the fourth year of seals, which means, like I said, Zerubbabel is going to be the one, whoever the modern day Zerubbabel is, is going to be the one to lay the foundation during the time of seals, which means we know a group, even though Jerusalem's been destroyed, a group will be allowed to return, just a group of them, to start rebuilding this foundation. They're probably going to believe they're going to get to rebuild everything 
but they're only going to get the foundation built during the time of seals. Remember what I said. The apostles are laying a spiritual foundation for people during seals while a physical foundation is being built so that the temple can be rebuilt once trumpets begins and the Lord is there on Mount Zion, Mount Zion, heavenly Mount Zion. It's established. The great multitude has come in. The seventh seal, which is his covenant that he makes, is done. We see right here. Well, it just so happens if you go into Zechariah chapter 4, you see that that's where Zerubbabel <coughs> has laid the foundation. Well, what does it say next? And in the 11th year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house, was the house finished? Well, how about that? In the fourth year of seals, we know the, the foundation is going to have is going to be laid. And then what happens? Antichrist has come, right? Remember, Antichrist has shown up. So they're not going to be able to rebuild everything. Only the foundation will have been done by the fourth year. Antichrist has his third, uh, 42 months. So he has until the sixth year of seals. Then the Lord comes on Mount Zion, destroys the enemies and everything else. So what happens? Only the foundation is laid. And then how many more years? It said seven years. It said in the 11th year. Now the temple was finished. What did Zechariah say? Chapter 8, the beginning of the first year of tribulation of trumpets or the eighth year of tribulation. We know the Lord is there on heavenly Mount Zion as the high priest and king Melchizedek. And Zerubbabel is the one overseeing the rebuilding of the temple. So now what's happened? It tells us in, in, in Zechariah chapter 6 that the one who laid the foundation will be the one to complete the temple. And in Zechariah 8, it says, let your hands be strong because now it's the time to build the temple on the foundation that was laid during seals. And how long is it going to take to rebuild the temple with the city streets and wall as we saw in Daniel? About three and a half years, which is the first half of trumpets. So it's going to get rebuilt, even though trumpet judgments are falling on other parts of the earth. The first three and a half years of tribulation of trumpets, approximately. The temple in the city and the streets are going to be rebuilt. That's why in Matthew's discourse, which we didn't talk about in Luke's in Mark's discourse, we saw the abomination of desolation, which is like Moses's portable temple, which is portable and was covered in skin which is us, because during seals, it's still the time of the house of Israel and the age of the Gentiles, where the temple is still the people. And so it's the time of the mark of the beast. But when the physical temple is now being built, and then Messiah gets cut off because Satan's cast down, we see that Antichrist comes back. He's the one that comes out of the pit. Satan is there, and the false prophet is there as well. So Messiah gets cut off. When does he get cut off? After the temple has been rebuilt, Messiah is cut off. And that's what we see in Daniel chapter 9. And that would be 10 and a half years total, which would be in the 11th year. And what did it tell you? Fourth year, the foundation was laid. In the 11th year, the temple was completed. It took seven years to build from the time that the temple was laid. And what is it? Seven years. When? over 10 years and a half. And then what happens? Well, then he's cut off. <clears throat> and there's your three more and a half years to the end of 14. It's absolutely perfect. Every place you find it, it's absolutely perfect. But in relation now to that first 70, we saw the Jerusalem 70, which is a 70 years that ends here. And then... It's the treading of the grapes of the great wine press of the wrath of God, which is the final year before the Jubilee. But what about Israel when they came into the land? Okay, when they came into the land, we know they didn't have a portion of Jerusalem right away. Right? They ended up getting a portion of Jerusalem, but it wasn't right away. And what we've all done is we all began to count in 1948, right, on May 14th, when Israel became a nation. It seemed valid. Of course, 
That's why by 2017 into 18, everybody was proclaiming the 70th year, the 70th year. But when it passed, nobody spoke about it except us. And we continued to diligently search. And we thought, okay, well, when you understand a session, non a session, okay, 1948, but then that would be from the fall. And so we thought maybe one more year. And then it wasn't one more year. And we were trying to figure this out and still kept diligently trying to understand what it was about. Well, what happens is knowing that this is telling us 70 to 80. 70 to 80 <clears throat> doesn't mean it starts at 70. It means when 70 is over. So this would be 70. So soon as somebody turns a birthday of 70 years old, the very next day is the first day of the 71st year. You following? That's how you get 70 to 80. All right? And so what happens is we were trying to figure this out. How on earth can we, can we not understand where the 70th is? <laughs> because we know that there's a 70 that starts it, that comes to an end, and there's a 70 that comes to an end, and then the final 14th year. So we were shared by a brother a while back that led us into, uh, where is it? Leviticus, uh, Leviticus, no, Numbers. No, Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19. In Leviticus chapter 19, there's a great piece of scripture that revealed the answer. Leviticus 19, starting in verse 23. And when you shall come into the land. Hello. When did they come into the land? In 1948. But there's more. But let's just take that for the beginning. When you come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then shall you count the fruit thereof uncircumcised three years. And it shall be as uncircumcised unto you and shall not be eaten of. So what did we do? What was I thinking? Okay, 1948. So we go 49, 50, 51. We, okay, three years. And so by 2019, later in 2019, and we started to see this, I thought, okay, well, three years. Because look at what it says about the fourth. In the fourth year, all the fruit thereof is holy to praise the Lord. So if it's holy to praise the Lord in the fourth, I thought, well, that's us going in the fourth. Well, it can't be go us going in the fourth because the count starts from the beginning. And then you would start your 70 years. What I did is I counted it as if the 70 years started and said, well, hey, we can probably even look at this by adding the four years at the end and saying, okay, that fourth year, this would be our escape, right? One, two, three, and then bang, that's going to be our fourth year escape. But that's not what it said either. But I was a little bit eager. We were excited, right? And I think the Lord does this for us on purpose because when you realize, as I did over this past year, I told everybody um, seven, eight months, nine months ago, whatever it was. And I now fully understood that the, the pre-trib is going to happen unequivocally at the true feast of weeks in whatever year it's going to happen, which I believe is going to be 2024. It had already passed in 2023. And we had the revelation of 70 years of Jerusalem, Jeremiah, to then seeing that count and then the final year and then the Jubilee. So we saw that that was in order, and this time had already passed. So I told everybody, you know, we've got one more year to go. And when I said that, all of a sudden our viewership dropped by half. That tells me there's a lot of people that maybe quite aren't watching as much, and not that they have to be watching our teachings, but you should always be what? Watching, praying, repentant, and to be like Enoch was, to be to to not taste of death and to be rewarded like Enoch was, it says to have faith in what? Those who diligently seek him. So I would just always expect that the brothers and sisters would keep watching at Ministry Revealed to see this diligently seeking 
and then study these things out so that we can be accounted worthy and, and be found worthy because we're diligently seeking him, right? But the viewership dropped by half. So I believe that the Spirit does this to us on purpose because had I fully understood this back when I first began to understand it, well, it would have been a two-year wait. Imagine if I understood that it was going to be two years out and I started telling everybody two years because I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, well, this is it this year and be so excited because I just wouldn't be as excited because I know what the truth was. So I think the Spirit did that on purpose and prepared us along the way to keep us uh, uh, digging, to keep us excited and not think, oh, my goodness, well, you know, here's the, the brother receiving all of this revelation through understanding and, and searching and seeking and the Spirit's leading and he's telling us two years, well, I'm going to go have some fun, see you in two years. So that's why I believe the Spirit did it. Because look at what it says next. And in the fifth year shall you eat the fruit thereof. <laughs> so it seems pretty clear. The fourth year wasn't for us. The fourth year was for the Lord. And then in the fifth year, it's yours to eat. So <clears throat> what happened is this. There's your, remember, we're talking the house of Judah, because they're the ones in the land. Judah is the one ruling there now. So Judah goes from Feast of Trumpets to Feast of Trumpets. So if we counted Feast of Trumpets 1948 to 49, that's one, there's two, there's three, but hold on a second. They didn't plant trees in 1948. They did it in January or February of 1949. So if they didn't plant until 1949 and the house of Judah counts from trumpets, well, then the count doesn't actually go from 48 to 49 because it said, and when you plant all manner of trees. So when you came into the land and planted all manner of trees, well, what happens? You planted the trees in January, January or February at the Feast of Trees, New Year of Trees. You planted trees, which means if we count from Feast of Trumpets 1949 for Judah, that means the first year of those trees being counted as one year would be 1950. So that means in the first year from Feast of Trumpets 1949 to Feast of Trumpets 1950, in that year would be the first year of the New Year of Trees. This would be your second year, and in 1951, New Year of Trees, January, February, would be the second year complete, in the second year, would be the second year complete of the New Year of Trees. There would be the third. This is in the fourth year. Now, why is in important? Because, look, it said in the fourth year, which means it has to be in their fourth year and the fourth year from the new year of trees. You see, so it's in the fifth year and the fifth year when the fruit of those trees would be ready. So then we had, like I said, so that brought us to first year, fruit ready, second year, fruit ready, third year, fruit ready, fourth year, fruit ready. Then it would seem that this is the fifth year and they could now eat of the fruit of the tree in that fifth year but that would have been last year this is why we were so excited for last year because if this is where they were allowed to take from it and it says in the fifth year you shall eat of the tree that means that fruit in the fifth year is now theirs which means the land and that going forward is now theirs so the 70 year count began in the fifth year. Well, if it began in the fifth year and the way I just counted it made this the fifth year, then this should be year one. But when we did that and we ended up that it should have already happened, right? Or I guess it was 2022 to 2023, Feast of Trumpets. This is why we were so excited coming into last year 
and this period of the Feast of Weeks of 2023 with everything that we had connected. Because the 70 then, what would the 70 have equaled? Well, the 70 would have been the 14th year, right? This would all drop by one, or you can just say everything goes up by one. It would have made the 70th year for Jerusalem at the end of the 14 years. Well, that didn't sit right. So even though last year, when this time came and passed at the Feast of Weeks, and all this stuff, more and more revelation was coming, it suddenly dawned on me, which we knew of Jeremiah 25, that when 70 years were done, then the Lord would bring the grapes of wrath, which is the final year judgment. How could that have happened if the 70 years didn't end until the 14th year was over? He's not going to bring the judgment in the year of release in the Jubilee. So it didn't make sense. It wasn't until this, that year passed and we started adjusting to look at the things for the following year that all of a sudden the Revelation 12 sign, when the ministry started getting revelations, um, when the 70 years for Jerusalem, when they finally had the rest of Jerusalem, that then the 20, Jeremiah 25 totally lined up. And I was like, oh my Lord. And then the whole count from Luke chapter four and doing the Jubilee that all of it started to fall in place. Except how do we understand the 70 of Psalms 90 and 10 being 70 to 80, how do we understand Zechariah chapter 1 when it said these 70 years for that Zechariah chapter 7 to say those 70 years, which were from the first year? How can we get it if it equaled one year off doing that count? And the answer <laughs> was found in what? The Lord's land. The Lord's land. Is all of Israel, does all of Israel belong to the Lord? Is, is the Lord's name in all of the land of Israel? Or did he say Jerusalem was his land? He told us his name. He placed his name. I'm forgetting where it was. <laughs> I think 25. Lord's land is Jerusalem. Land is Jerusalem. It's not all of the land of Israel. And so it never dawned on me that the count wasn't just because when they came into the land of Israel. And, and, and then when they planted the trees. Of course, those were important. Those were markers that had to take place. But do you realize they didn't have a portion of Jerusalem in 1948 or 1949? Did you know that? They didn't get a portion of Jerusalem because when they got Israel in 1948, a war break out, broke out immediately. So they got it on May 14th, the land of Israel, and then war broke out until spring of 1949. And then agreements were settled by the summer of 1949, and Israel did not receive a portion of Jerusalem until 1950. God's land, they did not receive a portion of the father's land until 1950. So knowing that and counting that, knowing that they got it in April of 1950 and it's the house of Judah, so it's the accession count, we're going feast of trumpets to feast of trumpets. So when was the planting of the trees time? January, February, new year of trees. So we were looking Feast of Trumpets 1950 to Feast of Trumpets 1951 was year one. 51 to 52, year two. 52 to 53, year three. 53 to 54, year four. And look what happened in the Sabbath counts all the way from Christ. The fourth year to the Lord 
was on a Sabbath. A Sabbath year. A Shemitah year. When the fourth year was to the Lord. And when did he give in Leviticus 19, he said the fifth year was now theirs to eat from. Not from the land of Israel, but from the land, Jerusalem, which is his land, the land that he is always talking about, which is his. And so the fifth year that was theirs, that began to be the start of the count for them, in a Shemitah year count, it equaled an exact beginning Sabbath year cycle of sevens. Which brings us to what? 2023, 2024, the seventh year being the 70th from when they first got a portion of Jerusalem, which is their 777. We are in this seven right now. This is, these are all the things that when you add all of these revelations together from the declaration of what Jesus said to the declaration of, of understanding that it was two months later when Jesus fulfilled it, to understanding when true wheat is ready and completed harvest, to understand when true wine is complete and harvested, to see that the scriptures told us there was an end of 70 to Jerusalem, then a year of this devastation and destruction in the grapes of wrath. But we know from Psalms and from Zechariah chapter 1 that there is an other 70 that comes to an end. The only way you can come to a 70 that ends in a cycle of Shemitahs and have the other one not end in a Shemitah cycle where it leaves only one is precisely in this count. There is no way. <clears throat> this is why I was saying within those counts of years and saying, well, if you count from when, when Jesus made that declaration, we know it can't be any of these other years. They're all out of the picture. But can it really be one more year forward? Do you realize it can't be? I truly believe it literally cannot be. King James would be out of whack. The Revelation 12 sign would be out of whack. But more importantly, 70th year of when they captured the rest of Jerusalem. 1967 would be out of whack. It would be down here in a jubilee cycle. It would make absolutely no sense. And neither would the rest of it. The mystery to the count of this 70 for Psalms 90 and 10 and for Zechariah chapter 1 was that we were building this count and this Leviticus 19 revelation of it based on the land of Israel and not when Judah got Jerusalem. Because who is in the land? Judah, Judah is in the land and they never received a portion of Jerusalem until spring of 1950. And in spring of 1950, they are Judah, a session, which means the official count of the king starts from trumpets, which goes feast of trumpets to feast of trumpets. And how do we know it? As we just proved in the teaching, the end of Mark which is the end of the sixth year of seals, is the day and hour no one knows. The first attack is Feast of Trumpets at the Red Horse Rider. And when the 13th year is over and the Lord returns feet down, Matthew 24, he's coming at the Feast of Trumpets, day and hour no one knows. He fulfills that final year. And when he fulfills that final year, it's the days of Noah after having come on the day and hour, no one knows. And it's one year to the Feast of Trumpets plus 10 days to atonement. That only happens in a 49th year so that the Jubilee can then be declared. And when is it going to happen? 
after the year of the Lord, which happens after the 70th. Man, <laughs> it's awesome. Wow, brother, Aaron, uh, Aaron, I did not expect that. Again, that's amazing. That's uh, it's just amazing revelation. But I have other questions. But I, uh, I, there's a brother here, brother Robbie, wants to ask you a question. So, brother Robbie, uh, 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 you can uh, open your mic and then ask brother Alain, Alan. There it is, Glenn Remnant Warrior. Sorry, Glenn. There you go. Or go ahead, Robbie. <laughs> Hey, brother, I just want to thank you, first of all, for the beautiful teaching and spending your time and evening with us tonight. It was great. I just wanted to know. Um, thank you. I love it. No problem. I just wanted to know, what does, how does the solar eclipse in April fit into your timeline? That's interesting because, you know, that's, it was a big deal, wasn't it, back in 2017? <clears throat> one that happened uh, around August 21st or something like that. A lot of people were really looking to that one and how we see that, you know, that, that whole X marks the spot in, um, in 2024. We know that that gives it about six and a half years. And is anything going to come from it? Well, one thing is it doesn't happen on a feast day. But it does happen, I think, around the 1st of Nisan, right? April 8th into the 9th, somewhere in there, depending on the part of the world. So it, it does seem significant. What I first, the very first thing that I think seems significant about it is that it's marking that the Hebrew calendar is, is on track. That's the first thing that I take from it. But the second thing I take from it is I don't dismiss that something may happen at this point. Will it be the beginning of the end of days? Well, you know, in a, in a roundabout way, we are in the end of days because the true end of days is 22 years. It's 777 and the final Jubilee. So, this, this is the, the preparation of the bride for the end of days. The, the spirit and the bride say come. This is the bride being prepared. So it is the end of days, but it's like Jacob's. It was, it was the easy portion. It was, you know, quote unquote easy. Doesn't mean everybody's life's easy, but it's easy in the sense compared to tribulation that's coming. So we are technically in the end of days. But officially, not until the 50 and the 14 years begin. So what does this have to do in relation to the eclipse? Well, it, it, it's interesting that the eclipse also makes that sign of Aleph, right? You know, I, I've talked a lot in relation to Savan. Savan is the month of Taurus, and it is represented by an Aleph, right, which is Taurus. And it's very prominent uh, in my ministry. It's, it's very important when you understand Taurus and, and the head of Taurus in, in the constellations. Do you know that the head of Taurus has two eyes? And Taurus is two eyes. The one on the right when we're looking up, which is really the left one looking down, is called Ayin. And in the Hebrew, Ayin means 70. Can you believe it? It means the number 70 in Hebrew. The left eye, check this out, it's called Aldebaran. And the left eye that's called Aldebaran is the 14th brightest star in the sky. And it is represented in Hebrew by noon, which is the 14th letter in the number 50. It's crazy. So I'm very connected and, and understand there's something going on, <laughs> excuse me, with Taurus and the, the symbol of Aleph. And the fact that it makes this over America, could it be some, is, is it just simply a warning for the watchman? 
that that are that are paying attention or is it something that's going to physically take place in America at that time and I don't know that I have uh, an answer like a, something crystal clear for you except to say that prophetically there I can't see anything that's telling us um, that that an actual event is going to take place. But more so, for the Watchmen community, will be aware and watching like crazy, and maybe it will reignite others because so much of this conversation will continue to pick up as it comes. But could some kind of devastation, an earthquake, or something happen at that time? Absolutely. It wouldn't surprise me at all. To the world... It might just be, oh my goodness, this earthquake or or something of whatever takes place at that time. For the Watchmen community, it would be, oh my goodness, this is a sign of ultimate signs. Uh, to the world, they won't recognize it. But what I think more than anything is whether just in the formation of it and all the chatter about it that's coming more and more, that alone might be what it is what its purpose to to ignite some of these watchmen that had kind of gone back to sleep and might start to bring them back like they did with the revelation 12 stuff and that eclipse that first happened back then and it might also be um something more but we can see that it's not going to be something connected to the the revealed end of days it's not connected to the 50 or the 14 years but we are getting so close in this. Absolutely, my belief is that it's 2024. And we're getting so close in it that I believe it is probably, highly probable, that it's something for the Watchmen to be aware of. And let me throw this out as well. Nissan 1 is exactly what? Six months, right? The Tishri 1. We know that between John and Jesus is exactly, well, is six months. So might there be something in relation to those watching and praying and being diligent that a, a remnant worker group, that these watchmen around the world, whether they're part of, of our ministries or others, because I don't believe only the, the Ministry Revealed group and those who understand the 14 years and everything else, I don't believe they're the only group of watchmen from them that will be workers, some of them. I believe there will be others as well. So could it be a period of time, knowing a six-month difference between John and Jesus, that something could be an igniter for these watchmen? Possibly, but I'm not expecting meteors or or any kind of destruction like that, because when we look to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and when we go to John chapter 8, and we see that, you know, uh, who will cast the first stone, we know Jesus is the one who's without sin, who can cast that first stone. When we go to Luke, I think, 22, and only in Luke do we see that Jesus says he's a stone's throw away, right? That the apostles and those with him were a stone's throw away. We don't read that in Matthew, and we don't read that in Mark. I believe because it's connected to Luke 21, uh, verse 25, uh, men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after those things, is because I think in the midst of this week of craziness, all somewhere in this time frame is when the stone's throw is coming. So I don't believe that um, the, the eclipse is, is, is a sign of, you know, we should expect a meteor or the tribulation to begin. But I believe it's for the Watchman community. And I believe it may be an igniter for the, the John Remnant group to kind of, some of them more to start to wake up more. That's how I see it. I'm, I'm not uh, prophetic in this. It's just what I'm discerning from it 
knowing what I know and where the connections of these other timings are. So hopefully that helps. Uh, maybe not what you wanted to hear, but uh, it doesn't mean we're not watching for it. We're definitely keeping an eye for it for sure. Well, you said something interesting, and it's is it marking the seventieth year, just like you explained then? Because with the eye, and... yeah, maybe it's marking that end of seventy too. Yeah, that end of okay. seventy. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be that, that from uh, from an Israeli Israeli side of things with uh, Nissan One. Yeah. That could definitely be something too. But again, you see what I mean? It's it's not something that's going to be recognized by everybody, right? You know, this marking of Aleph, this this marking maybe of the end of 70 for, for the House of Israel, um, you know, uh, uh, making an awareness to, to workers maybe and, and preparing more, even though they may not be aware that it's maybe going to ignite some of them more. Uh, and, and maybe there'll be some sort of earthquake with it. I don't know. If there's an earthquake with it, that will help wake up a lot more as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if there there was an earthquake. But for sure, um, you know, more awareness being brought to maybe a remnant worker group that isn't quite ready and awake yet. Thank, thank you, brother. And uh, I had someone else ask wanted to ask you one more question. Uh, I, I don't know if you answered this already, but. Is uh, Thessalonians, is that the escape of the preacher for you, or is it, does it mark, or no. does it go with the mark group? Um, Thessalonians has some really tricky wording. Now, you're talking about 1 Thessalonians? Yeah. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when we start in chapter 4, we can see some very interesting words. So, in 4.14... It says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which sleep in Christ will God bring with them. Well, what do we know about when God is going to bring a group who are sleeping who died in Christ? At the end of tribulation, right? So we know that that remnant worker group, right? The Smyrna group, which is that Luke group that works during seals, they're the ones putting their necks on the line. And they're going to be part of the resurrection of the just. They're going to be the ones that are going to rule and reign with them for a thousand years. So we can see this part. But now listen to what it says next. So this is definitely talking about the end of tribulation when he's coming feet down. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you, by the word of the, uh, by the, word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, listen to this, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. First of all, the word remain is a tricky word. So those who are left, but it's only used twice. And the reason I say it's tricky is because both places this word for remained is used is both here. One in verse 15 and one in verse 17. So it's hard to get some deeper insight how far this goes back into, or goes into the future of tribulation. But it's clearly those left around. So what else can we get afterwards? Unto the coming. Well, this word coming is an awesome word to understand the tribulation, to understand the revelation in the end. Watch this. This word is only used in Matthew's discourse out of all the Gospels. See that? Out of all the Gospels, it's used four times in Matthew about the coming of the Lord. So when is that sign of that coming and the end of the world? Remember, when he comes, he's going to be here now till the end of the world when he returns feet down. When is he coming? As lightning shines out of the west unto the east. This is when he comes, when everybody will see him on the clouds, even though Matthew 24 says in the clouds, the word in means on when you go to the, set, when you go to the concordance. So there he is. What does it say here? But as the days of Noah were. So what do we know about the days of Noah? It's the final year at the end of 13 years of tribulation when the Lord is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. It'll be the final year as it was in the days of Noah, which is the time of the coming of the Lord. All of these are directly pointing to when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of tribulation for that final 14th year which means 
this, those that are remaining unto the coming of the Lord, this is clearly talking about when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. All of this is talking about when he returns feet down. And what does it say? That they will, uh, um, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Which means what? Well, he's bringing those which are asleep. He's resurrecting, right? We know that there's a group being resurrected who's going to rule and reign with them. They're going to be brought first before these that remain are changed. You see, when we go to 1 Corinthians 15, you know, people that don't understand, uh, have a that don't have a better understanding of prophecy, they read this right here. And they think that it's all about pre-trib for Christ. Yet it says at his coming, it's the same one. It's his post-trib one. When he comes, when? When does the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives? He's coming at the seventh trumpet. Remember, Revelation 10 says when the seventh trumpet begins to sound, the mystery of God is over. And so what is the seventh trumpet? It's the last trump. So when we read here, and people love to go to this and say, um, where is it? Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This doesn't happen pre-trib. This doesn't happen at the beginning of trumpets. It's not at mid-trib. Mid it's at the last trump when the trumpet is sounded. The mystery is over. And those who were promised the resurrection be part of the first resurrection, they're the ones who are resurrected, who put their necks on the line, who will rule and reign with them. So coming back, again, we could see before those who are changed, there's a group coming back in the resurrection of the just, who are those from the Luke group, had their meal with them, put their necks on the line, <laughs> they're the Smyrna group. And then it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, excuse me, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're not talking pre-trib stuff here. Clearly this isn't pre-trib. And so when we come to five, what do we see here? But of the seasons and times. So now here's the question. Now when we come to this, it, it's, it's told us this stuff about the end. And now what are we being told? Now are we being told about pre-trib stuff? Or are we still being taught about post-trib? So let's have a read. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Well, even though you know perfectly, the only ones that know perfectly means exact. It's used five times. The only place it's used in these five times, let's have a look. You'll find out it's in Luke. And why does it matter that it's in Luke? Because it's Luke group that, that's given the revelation of the understanding. And so where do we see it? In relation, there's diligently searching. But what about those who have the perfect understanding? Luke was the one that said in Luke 1 verse 3 that he had the perfect understanding of things in order from the very beginning. Well, the only group that has that is the Luke remnant workers. They will be the ones who understand everything perfectly in order. <clears throat> now, they understand it perfectly from the beginning. So is this telling us that this group knows it all perfectly from the beginning, speaking about the beginning? Well, the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. When is he coming as a thief in the night? At the end of trumpets. He comes as a thief at the night, in the night, at the end of Revelation, when he comes in that final year. So again, we're still seeing here that this is connected to what the end of chapter 4 was saying, which was all post-trib. So now we come to verse 3. 
So when they shall say, peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of light and children of the day. You are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us which sleep, let us not sleep, but um, uh, as others do. But let us watch and be sober. Now you go into all of this conversation, and it certainly does sound pre. Almost like this group, which is the group as Luke one, who knows all things in order. And the only group who we know is given all of this understanding is the Luke 24 remnant bride workers, the ones that he had the meal in with Luke chapter 14 after the wedding, which is the Luke 12, those he told when he would return from the wedding, which is the Smyrna group. <coughs> Even though this is post in conversation, because they're the ones who are going to be part of the resurrection, having put their necks on the line, they are there. At the beginning. Remember, when Jesus comes to begin his 40 days, what does he do? He comes to shine his light in the darkness. And who is he shining his light on the darkness on? His witnesses, his workers, his remnant group from the bride that remained. Just like we see even in John chapter 8. He's beginning his 40 days, and when he begins his 40 days, he's coming to what? Shine his light in the darkness. So it, it really seems to me that even though the conversation from four is post, and five even begins with the post talking about when the day of the Lord will come, and it'll be as a thief in the night, the conversation is being had with a group of people who know perfectly what that understanding is, and we know that they are part of the resurrection, being those who will rule and reign with them at the end. And from the beginning, they were the ones that understand that when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction is coming upon them as travail upon a woman with child. So what is this travail period? The 40 days. When the Son of Man shows up. But another group escaped. Because there's those that didn't escape, right? So we have the pre-trib group that escaped. And when you go to this word that's only used seven times. We know it's also the one used in Luke 21. Out of all scripture of the Gospels, it's the only one used of those counted worthy because of those who are counted worthy who are escaped all these things you see what did it say in luke 21 that it will come as a snare on all those on the entire earth except for those who are what watching and praying so there's a group that was watching and praying that escaped all these things and there's a group that did not escape which is the rest of the world and they're there during the sudden destruction. So where would this peace and safety come from? Where do you think, or when do you think, this peace and safety is going to be made? I believe that that peace and safety is going to be the one made right in here. Remember, pre-trip happens, those accounted worthy to escape. It surprises the rest of the world is caught off guard. There's the seven-day wedding. And what do we know happens? Remember the first affliction? The light affliction that happens in northern Israel? Well, it's not going to last long. It's only going to last seven days, about a week. So what do you think is going to happen at this point? There's going to be a declaration of peace and safety. This is the time... At the end, right in this time frame, while that war is taken out, tens of millions of people have vanished. There's chaos. Northern Israel, Haifa and Tel Aviv with Israel, a Middle East war breaks out. And the world is in a panic. 
they're going to want to settle it very, very quickly. And they will. I believe this is the time frame when they will declare peace and safety. But what did it say? When they declare peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as what? As travail. When does travail come? In Revelation chapter 12, we know the travail comes at the beginning of the 40 days when the Son of Man is coming. Well, if we go to John, uh, Luke chapter 21, what is the possibility of when the Son of Man is coming? Well, it tells us in 25, and there shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. So you got your Revelation 12 sign. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Perplexity is another word for, um, uh, let's see, go to Luke chapter 24. This word for perplexity is also another one being used here, being perplexed. So what do we know Luke 24 is? It's the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And only in Luke do we get this word perplexed in the, in the, in the is of the Gospels of when he started his 40 days. And yet it just so happens that at the coming of the Son of Man, in Luke chapter 21, which is quite probably the picture of him coming for the 40 days, we see the Revelation 12 sign of events happening, the actual physical events of Revelation 12, verse 1, happening. And then what do we see? Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Something is about to arrive in impending attacking the earth, falling upon the earth, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What do we know is coming? The stone's throw. The stone's throw. So if the timing of the coming of the stone's throw is, the, is when he's coming to start his 40 days, then it would seem that the travailing and the things of perplexity that are catching everybody off, off guard and freaking out is when the Lord is coming as the Son of Man for 40 days. So when we come back to 1 Thessalonians 5, we can see when they declare peace and safety to settle down that, that short-lived Israeli Middle East war, then sudden destruction, which is the stone's throw, shall come upon them as travail, which is the Son of Man coming in a singular cloud, which is the beginning of the travail, which is the Revelation 12, 2 of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And that's why they are not going to escape because now it's over. There is no time for them to escape. <clears throat> they are like the Luke 21, 34 that weren't aware and are caught in the snare. And the remnant workers, which is the group that is being spoken about as having had perfect understanding, won't be caught sleeping. They're going to be the ones who are his children of light, that are being revealed the light in the darkness, because remember, they're the spirit-filled ones that are going to go and spread the light during the time of the 40 days, and then seals when the Lord is gone. They're going to go wake up who? The children of light. Jesus came to shed his light and to bring in the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is the ultimate work of the workers having received his light who will go out during seals. And that's why we also get that we wouldn't sleep, but we'd be watching and be sober. Just like Luke 21 says, that remnant group who will remain watching, diligently seeking, they're the same ones from Luke chapter 12, verse 34 forward, because what does it say? Let your loins be girded about and what? Your light's burning. Waiting for when he returns. What, what happens for these guys when they're watching? Well, he tells them not to be caught off guard, drinking and being drunken. But their watches, they're supposed to be watching. And their light's burning. So we can see, and I believe that's exactly what we're seeing, is that the conversation of all of this 
from four into five is post-trib to the conversation of those who will take part of the resurrection of the dead, who are the remnant bride workers, the Luke group and so forth, who, when this all begins, are those who have the perfect understanding, having been given it by the Lord, will be the ones seeing what's taking place while the world is now in chaos. They're declaring peace and safety when the stone's throw is coming at the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And now this devastation is really starting and there will be that remnant group with the Lord who will be sober, watching, praying, waiting for him when he comes and knocks on the door. So I believe it's all post and then goes to the pre in five to this group who is prepared after the pre-trib has already happened and the 40 days of the Son of Man are about to begin when that peace and safety has been declared. But that peace and safety is not the Antichrist peace and safety that everybody thinks it is. I believe it's the peace and safety of the uh, declaration probably by the modern day Cyrus who would make this declaration that they would be allowed to go back and rebuild. And that leads us back into Matthew, uh, sorry, it leads us back into uh, Daniel 9. It leads us into 2 Chronicles 36 uh, and so forth, going to Jeremiah and, and goes down that whole road. So hopefully that helps. We can see it's all post and then a conversation of pre, and it's all this conversation to, to the remnant workers, their reward, and, and how it all starts for them and to be watching. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much, brother, Alan, uh, for the, the, the information that you provided. It's overwhelming, but at the same time, it's refreshing because uh, mo uh, for most of us, we already know, you know, the, the 14 uh, years tribulation and the, th the, the three timelines, but you gave us even more information tonight, and that's just amazing. It encourages us, you know, it's encouraging uh, us to continue to watch and pray, and I want to thank you so much for, uh, you know, giving us the opportunity to uh, invite you uh, and um, praying that uh, this will not be the last because um, I know that, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, uh, like what I've said, it uh, went for s full circle back to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and right, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's just growing, you know, the 14 years and then the uh, three timelines is just growing. And I know my uh, brother Walter uh, has created multiple uh platform uh and then uh, yeah. he's he's uploading this video but uh, i just want to thank you again for um coming and uh yeah we'll uh and then you know it. uh if you uh brother alan uh, ministry rebuild has uh, its own uh platform the forum uh i'll uh, post the link to the uh, fellowship chat so you can uh, you can uh, register for yeah and then yeah and uh this uh, video will be posted uh, soon and i know a lot of yeah. people will be uh informed because uh uh you, if you can see this this server brother alan is a uh is, is from belgium it's more of a european uh um you know it's a hybrid of uh, english american and then the uh, belgium so yes. yeah yeah so yeah um no that's great and then you've got other ones like you said so you guys can post it there and we can post it in the forum and you know you have these other servers or other channels that they can be posted it's great and you know i want to make sure everybody knows that you know i jam packed this one with a whole bunch so i mean you can everybody can spend hours and hours just digging in and tracking and following it all to understand it for themselves and you will really really see how clearly it becomes revealed. And if you wanted access to the charts that I showed, you can just go to any Ministry Revealed uh, video on YouTube, on the Ministry Revealed channel, and go into the description box under the videos, and you'll see a list of all the different charts that are there. And you can just click till you see the one. But they're, they're named, but you can click on it and download the ones that you want and print or do whatever you want. Oh, yeah, this is packed. So I want to make sure that everybody knows you can really spend a lot of time in this one and uh, and just really, really seek and search it out for yourself. And it will become so clear 
at, I mean, you'll have even more trouble sleeping when you see how clearly it is. Oh yeah, uh, I remember hey. the first time I I saw. I mean, I understood this. Uh, the Revelation opened, the Book of Revelation opened, and then Daniel opened, and then the other books as well. But yeah, um, hey brother Michael. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was Robbie. just wondering. I was just wondering if if Brother Alan has uh, seen your video about the snake bite and uh, repentance, and if he had any thoughts on it. But if he hasn't, then it's okay. No, uh, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's still new. Yeah, we just lo- okay. uploaded that. Yeah, uh, on the uh, you know YouTube uh, Bride of Christ. But I think this is okay. Yeah. Well, hey, don't don't be shy. You can always post those videos in the forum as well, right? It'll uh-huh. you'll definitely at least get a little bit more traction in there too, and you know maybe get more people to see it and can sign up to uh, Bride of Christ as well, and you know everybody mm-hmm. just uh, supporting it's... each other with views and getting more of it out there, and you know some want to come into these forums and some want to come into the Ministry Revealed forum, and you know everybody mixed together yet you know they can still be content and having their own groups and and prayer requests and all that stuff, and you know absolutely that's no problem. Yeah, yeah so much. Cool. Our goal with that video isn't even about gaining followers or anything. It's just for those people who took the jab to know that they oh, okay. they can they can repent for taking the jab. And uh, Brother yeah. Michael does a great um, teaching on why repentance is available because in the old server, obviously Brother Charles was teaching it was the mark of the beast, and we we were trying to. Uh, he was we still were trying teaching to, it was the mark of the beast. Right, Brother Michael. Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah, but you know, there's a, it's it's a debate between uh, among Christians. Yeah. Uh, so I thought maybe to one hundred percent isn't the mark of the beast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. To end the debate, I said, okay, uh, I just made up a video. You know, for those who are unsure, you know, uh, the video was uh, meant for to lead them to Christ and then to go for water baptism. You know, and yeah, uh, Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great thing because a lot of people are unsure or maybe freaked out about it after. Mm -hmm. I believe it's part of the system being set up, no doubt. But it it absolutely isn't the mark of the beast. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good that you did that video so that, you know, people that do come across. And like we said, it's not about gaining, like you had said, a bunch of subscribers. But in a sense, it is about gaining subscribers, but only so that you can see that more people are viewing. You know what I mean? So it's, oh, yeah. it's never been a, a subscriber game, but it's a viewer game because we're trying to get for more people, right? So mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. sense, yes. And and by by subscribing to each other and and joining each other's platforms or forums, you know, it helps everybody kind of growing together. And when you guys post a video, you can post it in the forum, and more and more people will come to to know your videos as well and see some of the teachings. It's even like Mike at 165. You know, Mike at 165 doesn't teach so much as he used to on the the revelations that I do. He incorporates them a bit, but he's gone into another area because that's where his heart is really leading him, and that's where the Spirit is pulling him in. So it's great because then you got some with the prophecy and you got some being, you know, in in preparing in, in preparing themselves in the spiritual and, you know, then we've got Petra with her channel and and things going on there that the, that that remnant group is being prepared and readied and and they're aware of it and strengthening themselves. And so everybody's kind of playing all their little parts and pieces as the spirit's leading. And so by sharing together, uh, it, it'll be only beneficial for everybody um, to to grow and to understand when somebody new comes in, comes across you guys and starts to learn some of these other parts and pieces and gets drawn in a bit more and then says, wow, well, where did this come from? And then they see that from Ministry Revealed or from Petra's or whoever's, and it just grows and grows and grows, and people can get the, you know, everything all at once in one place. So, Yeah, I will just uh, cut the uh, YouTube uh, live, uh, Brother Walter, uh, and then we can continue if, you know, we want still want to, to stay. And, uh, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, and the... Uh, all right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. God bless you. God bless your families. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'll definitely come back again. Just let me know. Oh, yeah, brother Alan. Uh, you're more than welcome. You're actually, you know, you're uh, one of the biggest part of our 
our uh, was his um, knowledge now about the end times is because of of your teaching and we want to thank the lord for your life and your family and we will continue to uh you know uh, uh watch and pray and uh, seek the lord and we will continue to pray for you as well in the ministry that the lord has entrusted to you there's so much uh to um to learn but uh, once you learn it it's just you know it opens the bible opens uh, e uh i'm not saying easily because i'm still learning uh but it's just opens everything uh, about the end times it really does you know 